Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of a very sweet puma cub in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy seeing this speedy version come together but if you would like to follow along step by step in real time then check out my Patreon tutorial series of this piece. You'll be able to paint right along with me from the background right through to the very final whisker. But if you do enjoy this here on YouTube, then I would ask that you subscribe to me here and also hit the bell button for any future videos that I release. So the photo reference for this piece is based on a photograph that I took at a local animal sanctuary and I was very lucky to get right up close to this little puma. But the background in the photograph wasn't that interesting. It was a little bit too busy. So I decided to create a lovely out of focus bokeh background for this one. And there is a full length bokeh tutorial based on this background, showing you how I swapped in different backgrounds, tried out different ideas before settling on this one. And I also provide the guys on my Patreon channel with a full reference folder of different bokeh backgrounds that they might want to try instead of this one. So I love a good bokeh background. It's something that I put in a lot of my work. I love how it adds colour and pattern and interest to a background while at the same time enhancing the sharp, crisp details that are in the animal in front. So it's one of my favourite types of background to do. And I've got quite a few bokeh background tutorials already and this is just another one to add to the list. So if you're struggling with backgrounds, I would recommend this background tutorial and a few others as I've seen lots of my patrons come along leaps and bounds with their background work. So lots of blending, lots of layers go into this type of background. Lots of colour but Again, with all the blending, it tends to make the colours a bit more muted and really set them further into the distance. I really want our focus to be on all of the lovely detail on the Puma Cub himself. So that type of background works perfectly as it sits far enough behind the main subject and adds some real depth to your painting. So starting at the top of the animal, I usually start on the ears simply because I've got a whole face to lean my hand on and get all of those crisp little edges around the ears. It's always quite a fiddly part of any painting. So being able to lean my hand on the paper where it's still clean is a big bonus. So bit by bit in this tutorial series, I'll take you right from the start, creating the background. And then there'll be three more parts after that, showing you step by step each hair and how I create it on the Puma Cub. Of course, there'll be a whole part devoted to just those beautiful blue eyes, as they were what really drew me to wanting to paint this piece in the first place. But you'll notice just how much time I actually have to spend building up a believable texture to represent the fur. And on any cat, whether it's wild or domestic, I always find that the fur is incredibly thick and it takes many, many layers of small marks to build it up. So you can see I'm starting with the darks, coming in with my black first of all. And even on that first layer, I'm trying to get some sense of the texture and the direction of the fur. This is something I talk about a lot in my tutorials, especially this one, as a lot of the color was put down with the big sticks, even though it's tiny little marks that I'm trying to achieve. So I really show you in this tutorial series how to work with both the big sticks and for the very finest of details with the pastel pencils. 
and it's lovely being able to combine those two tools together. But at this stage I'm just sticking to the top half of the head, trying to build up layer after layer of small marks, blending in between the layers to soften everything. Coming back in sometimes with the black again just to add more definition and darkness throughout the hair. So it's not always as simple as just work from dark to light, then you're done. Sometimes I'm coming back in and redefining areas with the darks again. It really does take a lot of layers to create cat fur. And this month I'm going to paint some other cats. We're having an entirely cat themed month over on my Patreon channel. And I'm starting with a wild one, but I'm going to work on some domestic cats too of different colours. And of course, one of the most glorious things about painting cats are usually those big eyes, such large, expressive eyes. So nice to see big blue eyes like this. And in the tutorial for this part of the cat, I hope that I can break this down and show you step by step how to build up the big rounded eyeball and all of those little reflections on that shape that make it really come to life. So the eyes in the photo reference had a lot of tiny little bits of light reflected in them. It's one of the reasons that I still included quite dappled light in the background, not unlike the photo reference so that I can include all of those little reflections in the eyes and have them still make some sense with the colours that are around the animal. But really on this piece, the eyes were the least of my worries. The hardest part of this really was the fur on the face, especially where the fur is at its shortest. So down the front of the muzzle, around and underneath the eyes, all of those tiny little marks and so many layers to build up the thick texture of the fur. I always think it's the most difficult to try and create short, smooth looking fur. Sometimes long fur is so much easier because you can make your marks bigger, longer, more expressive. But with this kind of fur, you're really just trying to get the smallest marks possible in some places. And if you're struggling to get details with your soft pastels, I have just released a video here on YouTube all about making marks with your pastel sticks. How to get them to wear down, break them, all sorts of ideas to get the small details you're looking for using your big sticks. I'll add a link to that video at the end of this if that's something that might interest you. Because I'm always trying to get as much of the detail as possible with the big sticks. There's just no comparison to how strongly the pigment goes on with those big sticks. So I love my pastel pencils. You can see how much I've used them in this piece. I really couldn't have done it without them. But a lot of the main colour and the stronger marks are made with the big colourful sticks. And I use mostly unison pastels, and I've used uh, Terry Ludwig in this, as well as a new pastel black stick, which you've seen me pick up quite a lot during this piece. And of course I will list all of the colours at the beginning of this tutorial for those who choose to work along with me. But like always, it doesn't really matter if you've got the exact same colours to work along with me. Just seeing the palette 
will help you be able to choose your own palette of colours. It's great to learn how to substitute for colours that you have in your collection. So finally making it to the bottom of the face. The hair around the neck and the chest area is finally a little bit longer so not as detailed, not as difficult to do. And you can see a little bit of distance blur just on the backs of the shoulders and the body as it disappears off to the left. So I knew that once I reached the body things would speed up considerably. There were lots of times when I went back over the face again and again, just adding smaller and smaller details. This piece took me roughly eight hours in total. Which isn't that long for a painting, but it's quite a small painting as well at 12 inches by 10 inches. So definitely a lot of detail packed into a small space. If you're working along with me, feel free to work bigger if you want. But beware, you will just create more space for more small details. And it will obviously take you a lot longer. But sometimes working bigger with soft pastel is the key to getting those smaller details. So if you're struggling to get tiny details with the big chunky sticks, perhaps you want to consider working a bit bigger. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this short and speedy version come together here on my YouTube channel. Please do check out my Patreon channel as well as the full catalogue of tutorials that you can browse through on my website emmaculbertart.com But I hope I can help you further with your pastel skills and I hope that some of you will work along with me on this gorgeous baby puma. If you do, then as always, please do tag me if you post him on social media. I'd love to see. And of course, please do subscribe here on YouTube if you've enjoyed this or any of my other content. But thanks very much for watching this. And until next time, happy pastling.